Where can you find comprehensive medical services, expert clinicians, newly renovated spaces, and a breathtaking view all in one location? Only at the Des Moines University Clinic. Call today or visit dmu.edu slash clinic. Hello and welcome to this year's 50 in Better Health Fair. My name is Michaela Shia. And I'm Joseph Thompson. And we are second year physician assistant students at Des Moines University. Thank you very much for joining us for this presentation on blood thinners. Today's first question is why take a blood thinner? Most often, blood thinners are prescribed to prevent blood clots, which can become lodged in blood vessels in the brain, which is called a stroke, or the lungs, the legs, or other locations, which can all be equally dangerous. Blood thinners don't actually thin your blood, though. The medical word for blood thinner is actually anticoagulant, which means against clotting. These medications work by preventing clots from forming. The next topic we're going to be discussing is blood thinner uses. While there are many reasons a blood thinner may be beneficial for your health, the three most common indications for starting a blood thinner are one, for prevention of a stroke, which is a clot to the brain, two, prevention or treatment of a venous thromboembolism, which is a clot from the veins, or three, prevention of an arterial thromboembolism, which is a clot from the arteries. Of all of these treatment uses of blood thinners, there are two categories of blood thinner uses, primary and secondary prevention. Primary prevention is the use of blood thinners that are taken to hinder the development of a patient's first clot. Secondary prevention are the use of blood thinners taken to hinder the development of a second clot. Building off of the last slide, now we're going to discuss who needs blood thinners. There are many different reasons why your provider may want you to take a blood thinner. Some of these reasons include disease processes, primary preventions, or secondary preventions. Of possible reasons to take blood thinners for disease processes, indications include inherited or genetic blood disorders, examples being factor V Leiden, protein S or C deficiencies, or antiphospholipid syndrome, and many more. Disease processes also, like cancers, um, or receiving chemo and radiation for cancer in also increase your risk of clots, which may be another reason why your provider may want you taking blood thinners. For primary preventions, heart conditions are often a common reason for starting blood thinner use, of those being atrial fibrillation, heart failure, mechanical heart valves or valves, and coronary artery disease. Other reasons for primary prevention include prolonged hospital stay following surgeries, or long-term admission to hospitals or long-term care facilities. Lastly, primary prevention options may be for mobility issues. Limited walking increases the risk of developing a deep vein clot. Lastly, for secondary preventions, personal history of a clot, such as heart attack, stroke, or deep vein thrombosis, also increases your risk of developing another clot. History of clot embolism is also an, an additional reason why your provider may want you taking a blood thinner. Because there are both risks and benefits of being on a blood thinner, your provider will want to know about your past medical history to determine whether a blood thinner is right for you. Thankfully, there are evidence-based guidelines like the CHADS VASC score, which help your provider calculate your risks and benefits. They'll want to know if you've had congestive heart failure, hypertension, if you're over the age of 75, or any of these other listed items. One of the most common blood thinners used today is warfarin, or Coumadin, for clot prevention. For those taking Coumadin, frequent office visits to measure your INR may be second nature to you by now. But what does your INR actually mean? INR stands for International Normalized Ratio. It's used as a measure to see your range of clotting time based on the dosage of the warfarin 
that you are currently taking. An INR value lower than two increases your risk of clotting, while an INR value over three in increases your risk of bleeding. As discussed previously, the use of blood thinners can be for primary or secondary prevention. Knowing how to use these blood thinners really does make a difference for your health. So knowing the statistics is something that is really important. For primary prevention, on average, the CDC reports one American dying from a clot every six minutes. And of those suffering from blood clots, the three most common risks have been associated with cancer, hospitalizations, and pregnancy. For secondary prevention, three out of 10 people who have had a clot will suffer a second clot within 10 years of the first. Patients with cancer have a 3.6 times higher risk for developing recurrent blood clots as well. We've already talked a little bit about warfarin, but there are several other types of blood thinners on the market. The newest kind are called direct oral anticoagulants. Additionally, there are some medications used in hospitals by doctors like after surgery. Warfarin is the least expensive, but it does require frequent blood tests, which can be inconvenient. Warfarin is also affected by the amount of vitamin K you eat. It's not that you can't eat vitamin K containing foods, it's just that you have to eat a stable amount. Common foods that have vitamin, high levels of vitamin K include green leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and cauliflower. Direct oral anticoagulants are another kind of blood thinner, most commonly Eliquis or Apixaban, which did recently become generic, so we have hoped that it will come down in price soon. One important food interaction that you should be aware of is that grapefruit juice can increase the amount of Apixaban in your blood, which may cause increased bleeding. So be cautious about drinking too much grapefruit juice. While on a blood thinner, it's important to tell your doctor what other medications you're taking. Just because a med is over the counter does not mean that it is totally safe. Some meds that are commonly taken that can interfere with blood thinners include the NSAID category. This includes ibuprofen, also known as Advil or Motrin, naproxen, also known as Aleve, Anaprox, Midol, and Walproxen, and aspirin. Herbs that can interfere with blood thinners include alfalfa, anise, and bilberry. We've already discussed the main benefits of taking a blood thinner, which is to prevent clots from forming. However, the flip side of that is the risks. The main risk of taking a blood thinner is serious bleeding. There is always some serious risk of bleeding, especially if you have a major injury, need surgery, or have an epidural, which is inserting a needle into your spine for anesthesia. Studies have been done which evaluate the risks and benefits, and your provider will help you analyze these risks and benefits and decide if a blood thinner is right for you. This slide covers the most important things that you can do as a patient to manage your blood thinner. First of all, take your medication at the same time every day. I would recommend setting a timer for yourself. If you forget a dose, take it as soon as you remember. But if it's very close to the time for your next dose, just go ahead and skip the dose you missed and take the next one on time. Do not take two doses at the same time as this can increase your risk for bleeding. Do not stop taking your blood thinner unless a doctor tells you to, as this will increase your risk of strokes and clots. Do not run out of your medication. Make sure you get your refills before you need them. If you fall and hit your head or injure yourself in some other manner, call your doctor even if you feel okay, as he may want to assess the risk for bleeding. Finally, to prevent small nicks and cuts, use a soft toothbrush and an electric razor. Finally, I just wanted to share GoodRx.com with all of you. GoodRx is a free website where you can find coupons and competitive pricing for the medications that you're taking to find them at the least expensive price. Thank you so much for joining Joe and I for this lesson on blood thinners. We hope that you learned something today and are able to manage your blood thinner appropriately.
at Des Moines University's Family Medicine Clinic, our goal is to provide you with compassionate care that is comprehensive. From caring from children to the elderly, our medical team provides holistic preventative guidance on how you and your family can maintain a healthy lifestyle and manage any symptoms that may arise so that you can be at your best. During the current COVID-19 pandemic, maintaining your health as well as a safe lifestyle has never been more important. Our providers are here to help when acute conditions affect you or your family. We treat musculoskeletal injuries, infections, illnesses, and many other medical conditions. As an academic medical center, DMU is training tomorrow's healthcare providers on how to provide expert care to people from all backgrounds. We invite you to visit the Family Medicine Clinic at Des Moines University. We offer the care and attention you deserve. Thank you.